Eco Electricity Distribution Company. That's what they shot into Eco Disco. It's the product of the unbundling of what was then the power holding company of Nigeria, PHCN, when the government took a decision at that time to prepare the distribution and generation segments of the power chain for privatization. Distribution company, as the name describes, our number one thing is we're licensed under the uh, regulator to distribute power close to half a million customers. Uh, now, keep in mind, a single customer can be an estate. So for us at Eco, we take on anywhere pretty close to 15% of the grid energy. That is all the grid supply in the country. I think we've given the most revenue to the market so far, if I'm right. And our losses have been quite remarkable. We've done very well based on that. We occupy what I would call the high-end, richest part of Nigeria to say, which is Lagos. We have about 11 districts running from Badagi to Ekwe, and concentration areas in Suleri, Festac, and the new Lagos, which I call Ibejuleki. It's part of what we are trying to do. So, Mekudiko is a small, but a very densely populated disco and um, very important to the country and so far I think we've done a lot to try and take care of our customer. At the time we acquired the disco, it was in a bad state in terms of the infrastructure, in terms of even data as to the customers, in terms of information as to historical things with the network, with every aspect of the business was analog, it was not digitalized, there was very little in terms of communication between things that you have on the field and what you have in the offices to be able to get real-time information. Before privatization, LCC was wholly owned by the government. Generation, transmission and distribution of LCC was handled by the federal government and it was a typical government corporation with a lot of inefficiencies, corruption, and of course, heavy subsidy by the federal government because it was owned by them. In Nigeria, we worry so much about 5,000 megawatts. Yeah, 3,000 megawatts. That's the total unit of power that's generated for distribution for all Nigerians to use. Now, the Millennium Development Goals tell countries to aspire to give 1,000 megawatts per 1 million of your population. So if we say Nigeria is 200 million people, really we should be talking about 200,000 megawatts. But as you know, we're nowhere near there. Post privatization, we still have outages because the production of electricity in the last 65 years has been very low compared with the population. But it was not like we were not aware of it. We knew we were inheriting something that was going to be a difficult one, but we had a plan to make it better. Immediately, uh, we defined the vision of ECO to be the leading and customer-centric utility in Africa and preferred choice of stakeholders. Uh, we were also clear about the mission of Eco Disco, which is to empower the quality of lives of our customers, community, employees, and other stakeholders. When I look at my board members, uh, all my directors, the conversation never changes. Conversation is about continuing to look at the metrics for the improvement, while understanding that customer feedback is key. So. Staying focused, again, I always tell people, I'm a customer of my own product, which is, there's nothing better than that, which means that instead of being defensive, I can understand the critique of our customers, where we all want improvements to come, they don't come quick enough, and that is across all sectors of our economy. The distribution companies today are owned 60% by the private groups and 40% by government. Generation companies, 80% by the private group, government still retains 20%. But transmission 
is still a hundred percent with the government, and that's a problem. TCN still have to go to the National Assembly to clear their budget. So what that means is that if there's a major work to be done in the network and they don't pass that budget, it's not being done. And I wonder that will the power from the Jenkos to the discos. That's a major problem. And if that middle point is not profit driven, then we are all going to lose it. So we need to make sure that TCN is partially privatized or fully privatized so that we can all be on the same page in the sector and to give Nigeria better service. I'm sure you all of you are experiencing power outages now. It comes on, goes off in five minutes, goes up. It's the transmission. And that's because we practice what I call a national grid system. In other words, all generating companies are generating power and taking it to one central grid from where it is then taken through. You see those huge transmission lines that traverse the country. Those are the transmission lines through which power is then dropped down to the distribution companies before you then take them and begin to take them into homes. If there is no gas to power the generating plants, there will be very little power to transmit. If the transmission lines are compromised, wahala. In the end, when it gets to the distribution companies, they can only give what they have. Governments all over the world nowadays do not run business. Government cannot run business effectively, efficiently, and as long as government continues to meddle in the running of any private business, I'm not sure that the business can succeed. But that is not to say that we can just blame government wholly for the problem in the Nigerian power sector. And there are very many reasons. Some of it is from our own side, some of it is external and outside our control. I would say number one on the outside will be our customers. A lot of them bypass meters, they don't pay, they're aggressive to people who come to whether collect, disconnect them or even repair things inadvertently. They think they are there to disconnect lines, but they don't know they're there to repair things. And so those are social problems or oh, we have economic problems. Things like food, electricity, sometimes when people cannot afford it, they can also cannot afford to starve. But they also cannot afford to be without electricity. Uh, that happens everywhere in the world, but I think the thing that is missing is that you can also conserve energy. You can you know, use what you can afford, you can use responsibly. Generally speaking, Nigerians like to use electricity free of charge. If you look at other countries around us, we're one of the worst in terms of willingness to pay. More than 37% of meters installed are bypass. All the money that goes to service by industry comes from consumers. If there's compromise by way of theft there, it means the entire value chain is shortchanged, including paying your overseas suppliers. And what happens? They won't supply you spares when the time comes. So your equipment goes obsolete. So there's a consequence for everything. Where there are 30 people, 30 houses, connected to one transformer, 30 of them. The transformer is metered, so the disco knows how much energy comes out of that transformer every month. Let us assume that out of these 30 people, only 10 of them have meters. 10 of them will be paid meters. 20 are on estimated billing, because they are yet to be metered. Now, those 10, the moment two of them bypass their meters, it means that the leakages from their houses are being paid for by these other 20 people. Unless the disco is aware, and then they take positive action against those who have bypass. But as long as the disco is not aware, what happens is that the thieves are making the innocent ones to pay. That's why you go to so many areas, they say, ah, crazy billions. When you allow your neighbor to steal power, he's stealing your money because you're a Nigerian. When he steals the power, it means there's not enough money for the disco to pay the Jenko. When the Jenko don't get any money, they cannot produce because they don't have enough money to pay the gas company. So what happens is that in over a period of time, you will stop having power. And for businesses, sometimes we see you can tell that, again, they probably decided that a way to increase their margins would be to cut out a significant cost. But the problem with that is that there are laws and regulations that protect Eco Disco and other distribution companies in the event that they find these fractions. And I believe if those laws are done properly and we find one of them that are jailed for bypassing, everybody will sit up about the process of between because we all need the money. Yeah, we recorded a few convictions all over, everywhere, Lagos, Ibadan, everywhere. But it's not enough. We don't even have accurate sensors. We don't have accurate data. Uh, when somebody is arrested, and a bailable offense, you have to bail the person. You have to allow the person to be bailed. You see, we are now morally bankrupt in Nigeria. 
If you tell anybody that is doing anything wrong, they will say you're not smart. That if you're smart, you will join them. I don't know how I will feel if a policeman comes here to arrest me. I tell my son, I say, remember the son of who you are. A couple of people will tell you, oh, we don't have meters and we do not trust estimated billing. So we will just go out there and game the system. People are not metered. You come and give an abstract bill. You give me power for maybe seven hours a day and you give me a bill of 24 hours a day. You don't expect me to pay that. So there's this argument for to and fro. Yes, there are crazy bills. But sometimes some owners of some bills are crazy and crazier than their bills. So when people are metered, it will reduce the leakages that we have in the system. It will reduce the argument. It will even take off the argument on estimation. And then we'll be able to catch more chiefs. At privatization, we're about 180,000 metered customers. Today, you're looking at over double that in terms of metered customers. And you have a national mass metering program that is looking to fully close the metering gap by, by January. A lot of our customers were metered before privatization but they were not smart meters. What we've done, I'm trying to make sure that most of our customers have smart meters. Smart meters are meters that can speak to the system, where you have maybe a SIM card inside the meter. There's a telecom aspect, there's a communication. So if you tamper with it or do anything, but they are more expensive than normal meters. But some people have black meters in their home, meters of 1968 and 1975, and they will tell people, we have meters, so they don't read my meter. Sorry, oh, meters have lifespan. The last one is usually 10 years. In terms of metering of customers, I mean, estimated bills is one of the things that, you know, would frustrate customers a lot. It frustrates me a lot too. Yes, we do estimated billing, but uh, estimated billing has is a science to it. We don't just build people who feel like. Um, because we couldn't meet everybody, we, we, we have our transformers, GTs, GT, that we use to measure those areas. So I can come as close to my street here and I can determine what I should estimate with. So it's not just periodic estimation, but that was then. And I don't think that's so going forward now with the meters, that will end. And also NEC has also warned us that we should stop estimating and give and there's a limit to what we can charge people when they don't have meters yet. So they've been protected already. You know, when you have meter, your consumption, you regulate your consumption. But those that without meter, most of them, they will just put on their lights, put all gadgets on. This building now, you find out that you find energy seven balls. And I'm still on analog, but I'm getting ready for a smart meter. Currently, there are more or less two initiatives running. There was another program that was on, and that was for normal meter acquisition program. So under this meter acquisition program, you will pay upfront or you will pay on an instrumental basis. Under the national mass metering plan that's going on, the CBN is making funding available. The World Bank too will also make some funding available. And I'm sure you've heard about the Siemens initiative from the government. We'll also address partially some of the meter issues. So between those initiatives, there's a meter rollout and there's no pressure on consumers to pay for them. If you want to pay, you're happy to, you're welcome. But in the end, you'll be refunded. Just go to our website, www.ekdp.com, and if you read through, you will see where you can actually just order for a meter. Once you order for a meter, you put in your details, your means of identification, and simple things like, oh, how many bulbs do you have in your house? What generally, basically an energy audit of your house online. Once you're done with that, we're done, and we'll come to meet as soon as possible. We took over this disco with a passion, not just revenue alone, to make a difference to negotiations. A lot of people believe we collect a lot of money for us. We collect money on behalf of the whole sector. Discos own less than 25% of the collection. While we collect all that money and we remit to the market, because the market is not left, it is a gap. So when you are meant to pay 45 naira and you are paying 20 naira, it's a gap that exists. With that gap, our books are never whole. If you are asked to, you know, to operate below your cost, somebody has to pay the difference. And that meant it was accumulating in the books of discos as losses. A lot of discos had more than a hundred billion on their balance sheet as losses. 
However, it has been regularized. We are on a journey, a very long journey since 2013. We are not even halfway yet. So every time there's an increase in tariff, it is taking us a bit closer to the journey. We have just gone to 48 Naira. We can get as high as 60 Naira because a lot of people, even within Lagos, are paying 100 Naira, 150 Naira for, for power. When you are getting 20 hours of power, that's when you can charge you 48. If not, you have to go below that amount. When we came in, the monthly revenue was about 2 billion. Today we are doing close to 11 billion. We are the first disco in Nigeria to have what they call the SCADA. And the SCADA is, you know, supervisory control and data acquisition. In essence, what it be, means is that it improves a human-machine interface, which basically helps you oversee your whole network. Pre-privatization, we used to rely on our customers to make calls to us that there's a fault in so so, -so address before we, uh, we deploy our resource to those locations. But with the SCADA now, we are able to know real time what the fault is, you know, and quickly deploy our staff to those locations to quickly um, resolve the issue. It was less than five billion to do, and it's the first of its kind in West Africa. It's just improvement of service, and that's what we want, and that's what Nigerians are crying for. That SCADA, I give you 100% um, for that if it, as it's working. We're all thinking revenue, quality, making sure that there's um, supply to as much customers as possible. So when there's a downtime or an outage, there's no sleep, there's no rest, everybody's running around making sure that we have those supplies back. With the data that we have in our organization, we reach out to our customers on information that we need them to know. If you call them, they respond. If they're not coming, they will tell you. Several times my issues have been resolved through email. They give me something code to trace the progress of my complaint. I would say Eco Disco is one of the best discos in Nigeria. And Eco Disco, I must also say, have one of the best customer service orientation. Customer is king to us. Without the customer, we are nowhere. So it's not actually a department for us, it's an attitude. The system in EKDC is quite interesting. The engineering team uh, does respond. Um, but I find also that the PR unit also takes active interest in the resolution of uh, supply problems. When the beer Nepal, you know, it's a federal government, everybody do whatever he likes. But now it's a company, if he misbehaves, they sack him. Termination and dismissal, actually, for major offenses that border on extortion, use of NEPA 2, um, energy theft, which are behaviors that we totally, totally are bullish about in a code school. The consumers can access our whistleblowing platform on our website. We've done a lot when it comes to CSR. You cannot be taken from the society and you don't give back. Ecodisco adopted us in 2018. They have supported us monthly with our finances. We have a child with autism. We have a child with mild cerebral palsy. We have a child with Down syndrome. These children have special needs and some learning disabilities. We have, had to, we have to hire a therapist for them and it's not cheap. The support of Echo Disco has helped us to be able to afford it and in so many other regards, we thank Echo Disco. During the lockdown, we had to step up our work by making sure that supply was constant. We donated food items to Lagos State Government, and then at the same time, we made sure that we quickly extended our services to all the isolation centers in Lagos. We donated ventilators to major hospitals in Lagos. The code is 
is not where we would love it to be. But in terms of all the discos, where I think I'm ahead of everybody else, not in a boastful way, but we just are in terms of the numbers, ratings from NERC. I don't just dream, I aspire for, uh, for an eco that has a 24-hour supply. We want what you want. All we want you to do with us is to first of all make sure you pay for the tapa you use. Everything, like the word power suggests, is powered by electricity. Today we're all crying insecurity, population growth, and SARS, different things. It all comes down to one thing. There isn't enough to go around. So we need to create wealth in this economy so that we can cater for everybody. Electricity holds the key and I invite our consumers to come with us on this journey.